Hello folks and welcome back to another Narrowboat Florence Rose video. Today we're going to be restoring a 1957 ammo box. So let me start by showing you around the box a little bit. As you can see it's rusty but the good thing is there's no holes in it. It's not rusted through so it's surface rust. I've got the clasps there there's the inside whack these clasps back on for a bit we've got side handles both sides there's the back obviously the other side the bottom is exactly the same it's just a different colour and the top We've got the ammo type and the date stamps on both sides. I mean, that looks like the original paint to me, that green. So, it's getting on a bit. We've got to see if we can bring it back to life. Because they are good for storage on about these old ammo things. So, we've got various different grits of sandpaper. We've got a HG paint preparation cleaner, so after we've sanded it, we'll clean it with this. And then, in here, oh, oh, it's leaking a bit. I've got a rust converter in there. It's the same rust converter that I used when I did my water tanks on the boats. I can't remember what it's called so if you wanted to know what it was called have a look when I did the water tank on the boat. It's a video from a few years back but should be easy enough to find and uh, that's the same stuff. Lastly I brought this satin sheen paint. It's an interior wooden metal in forest green and it says quick dry satin ideal for interiors for wood and metal so I went with the uh, forest green because I thought we'd keep it green like the original colour right then I think we'll make a start with the top why not so Going to put a bit of water on it. Because we'll use it like a wet and dry sandpaper. This is just canal water not using fresh drinking water on it right. proper mingy inside Right, so this preparation cleaner says to dilute it into water, mix it and then pour it over. So that's what we're going to do, then let it dry. Right then, oh, let's give that a shake, mix it in a bit. Okay, it's all bubbled up. We're going to give that five minutes, then we'll pour it over. It says then to rub it off with a damp cloth, so we'll do that. It's a shame because this has only been out five minutes and it's dry, so. So 
So I had a look what the rust converter was called and it's called aqua steel. So I'm going to start painting it inside and out and all over on this box. And what it will do is it will convert all the rust back into steel. It will turn blue and then once it's hard it will turn black. Right, I've repositioned the camera so you can see actually what I'm talking about. You'll see it turn blue and then black. You can hear an engine going, there's a fella behind me trying to moor his boat up. But I thought I'd just change the camera position and do the top part so you can actually see the colour changes in it. I won't film the rest of me painting the whole of the box with this converter because it'll just get a bit monotonous in the video. Oh, go away fly. God almighty man, leave me alone. It'll just get a bit monotonous, do you know what I mean? I mean, the top part, it's a five minute job. It's all right, I'm trying to work it into the pitting of the box. Because like I say, I mean, it's heavily pitted. This thing, I found this while I was on my, one of my walkabouts, just sitting in patch of grass, no houses, nobody around so if anyone claims it good luck to them but it's a shame really because it's a little bit of post-war history you know 1957 so 65 years it's done well to last as long as what it has It's a shame to just let usable things rot away into nothing. I think it is anyway. I mean, if you can repurpose something and all it's taking is a bit of your time where you'd just be sitting around doing bugger all, then why not? Right, that's the top part done. I'm going to leave it 10 minutes and then I'll show you the actual colour it's gone. I mean, as you can see, it's going that dark purpley colour. Once it's dried, it should go to a more black finish. So, as you can see, I've done the lot in the aqua steel, the rust converter, and it's working its magic. You can't see it too well that side. Can't stand it up because I don't want to touch it <laughs> without my gloves on. But the bottom part was as rusty as you like. Let me put my gloves on and turn it round a bit. Right, we got it the other way up now. As you can see, it's converting that really well. There's the little stamps on it, which are coming out a little bit better. Lopen her up. The insides come up really well. Let's get out of the sun so you can see it a touch better. Yeah. That aqua steel. If you've never used it, it is fantastic stuff. Right, 
going to give this a good little bit of time for it to dry out I think right so I've given it another wash with that pre-paint treatment as you can see it's come up quite well I think it has anyway I'm wondering whether to paint the inside or not I mean to give it a proper nice hard finish that is converting it back so I'm thinking whether to um, just leave the inside as it should be I think I'm going to, to be honest right then time to make a start on the painting I think right then to make a start on the painting but before that let's have a bit of a libation so cheers Okay, this is the Camden, Camden Town Pale Ale. Tastes like Fuggles hops to me. I don't like them. Don't mean to say that I'm not going to drink it though, because I am. <laughs> oh, tell you what, that. Um, that ammo steel has destroyed these gloves and my fingers where it's come through. Look at it man, it's perished all the plastic on it. Been giving this a good shake. Like I say, it's a quick dry satin sheen and forest green, it's for wood and metal. Would have preferred just a metal paint, but I couldn't get one so I had to get what I could. Been giving it a good shake. We'll see what it's like. If we can ever get this top off. Tell you man. I put that on proper. Right, okay, I'll show you the actual colour. That's the colour we're looking at, let me get it out of the sun a bit. Don't look too bad in all fairness. <clears throat> right then. Let's go for it. Heavily pitted this is, so gonna have to work it into the little cracks. Before we smooth out the brush lines. Okay then, so this is lovely and dry now. We're going for the second coat. Oh, do you know what? <clears throat> Cheers again. <laughs> Taya, what a wicked weekend we're having. The weather has been fantastic. I'll do the lip first. Second coat's going on really nice. Here we go, lovely job, Blake. 
Right then, that second coat is done. I'm on another beer. <laughs> I'm gonna show you around it. You're gonna see different colors on it because it's not dry. But it's come out really well. You can see the markings on it. If you know what the markings are, can you leave it in the comments? I mean, I can read them, but as to what they mean, I am not 100%. I've just ordered some, you know, you can't see the back too well, but it's pretty much the same. I've just uh, been onto Amazon. I don't want to close it and put the catches up. I want it to dry first. Well, fully dry, I should say. Yeah, I've just been onto Amazon and ordered um, a spray lacquer to plastic coat it. So you won't get all chips and damage to the paint. I've left the inside as it was originally. I've just put obviously the rough converter in it to um, protect it but I thought I'd leave that just original. So the next stage is put the plastic coat on but that might come in a day or so by which time this will be fully dry. So I'm quite pleased with that so far. So I'm currently in the boat at the moment. My lacquer spray did arrive. It come the next day. So I'll just show it yeah. This one was off Amazon and it was I think 12 12 just under 12 pounds. So it says polar Renovate, revive, protect, flawless lacquer, crystal clear finish, durable protective lacquer, interior and exterior loose. I did buy the crystal clear gloss. I've been having a look on the back, it says spray it from 25 to 30 centimetres away and to give it 15 minutes to half an hour before you recoat it. But as you can see, it's a gorgeous sunny day if you can hear mm -hmm. right as you can see we've got a box outside we've got a little spray I've set it up out here because the towpath really isn't wide enough for me to do it out here so I thought I would just give it a little go out here so let's start off. I want to do a nice even coat. Just going to go up and down, then left to right. Like so. Get the sides. Right, want to try move them catches up so I can do the other side of them. Don't matter if they fall down when I've sprayed them, just as long as I get the spray on them.
locks that. Okay. Get it to the side a touch. Right then, we've done two coats, inside and out. Just gonna move around here a bit. It's come out quite good. It's a good hard coat in lattice, and it dries really quick. It's gave it like a glossy finish. Moved it out of the sun a little bit. But yeah, it's come up really nice that has. And like I say, it dries really quick. And it's give it that enamel coat. Just showing you the back and sides a little touch. So hopefully that's going to protect it I think folks. So we're coming to the end of our little storage box or ammo box video. So what did it cost? Brushes, I already had them. Sandpaper, I already had it. The paint cost £2.50. The lacquer that I top coated it with, that was £11. All it took was, I don't know, if you were going to buy the stuff it would be under £20 I would have thought. It's only taken a little bit of time. It's come out really well. I've lacquered the inside. These are a bit tight. I don't mind that. This one comes off easier than this one. The handles, everything has worked out right with this. And hopefully it will get another 65 years of use. All it would have done is just sit there rotting. So we've given it a new lease of life. It's pitted, it's old, but it's functional and it works. So, hope you enjoyed that one folks, and if you did, I'll catch you in the next episode of Narrowboat Florence Rose. So, bye for now.